Greetings, fellow conquerors. This is Darkfire Slide, and welcome to another episode of EU4, the Great Ideas series, in which I'm going to be talking about every idea group. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about religious ideas, a common favorite among the crowd, I would think, uh, certainly by the amount of comments I get about religious ideas. And today we're going to talk about uh, what they do, how to use them, when to take them, and if they're any good, and how I feel about them. All of the above. So without further ado, let's just get started. Alright, first idea of religious ideas is missionary schools, which will give you an, ad an additional missionary, which is obviously going to help you convert more provinces more quickly. And this is indeed a very powerful idea, just because, you know, otherwise the only other way to get more missionaries is to own one of the holy cities. Um, so, yeah, this is definitely a very powerful idea, especially if you don't have access to those. And holy cities such as uh, Rome and I believe uh, Jerusalem as well uh, is another example. Uh, the next idea we have is church attendance duty, which is a stability cost modifier of minus 25%. Now, this is this is a decent point saver. So over the course of the game, you gotta imagine that you probably raise stability something around 10 to 15 times. So in reality, it's only saving you probably about 250, maybe 400 points or so. Uh, but the important thing about this is that it helps counteract one of the biggest problems with stability, which is if you have a lack of religious unity, uh, if I can click on the right tab, uh, as we can see, even at 87%, I have a 12% stability cost modifier. So really, in addition to just lowering the cost in general, it also helps fight off religious, uh, in, yeah, a lack of religious unity, uh, which is pretty useful. It doesn't save like a ton of points, but it can be very helpful for getting your uh, stability up more quickly so that's kind of the other use of it is that if you have a disaster for example many disasters require you to raise your stability up to plus two or something and sometimes if your stability modifier is too high it can take you too long to actually get to that point and so having stability cost modifier reduction of 25% is actually quite meaningful because it means that you have to spend less time actually saving those points. So even though it doesn't really save you that many admin points per se over the course of the game, it can be very pivotal in certain moments. It's still not amazing, but it does have its uses. So let me get to one of the best ideas in the group, which is Divine Supremacy, which increases your missionary strength by plus 3%. Since normally the baseline is 1%, this is quite good. And uh, that's probably not right. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me double check on that, actually. Base value is 2%, so that's, that's my bad. Anyway, the reason that this is so good is because a lot of religions are very hard to convert. Uh, notably, most branches, I think all branches of Islam, uh, have a 2% base increased modifier. So if you're just running basic religious ideas... Um, and you haven't hit Admin Tech 8 to pick up the Active Uniformity yet, if you're Christian, um, it can be impossible to convert new provinces. Um, so having that plus 3% means that any any provinces that aren't of your religion, you're actually going to be able to convert, and you're going to be able to convert them much more quickly. Uh, with this 3% bonus, this, this is usually enough to convert any province in the game, and if not, you can usually just accept the culture that a province is in if it's too high development. Say you take something like uh, Constantinople or Rome or any of the big cities, and it's not of your religion, uh, this will help you convert those provinces for sure. So then we get on to Devoutness, which is Tolerance of the True Faith plus one. What this basically amounts to, in the long run, is a minus one to local unrest, uh, but only for provinces where you actually have your religion so the thing is for a lot of nations you're gonna have something along the lines of about five or six tolerance of the true faith on average so this is gonna bring you up to something like seven and if you're a religion that gets tolerance of the true faith I think Orthodox may now have that or used to have that um, for example you can get very very high tolerance of the true faith uh, but again in reality, this mostly is just a minus one to local unrest modifier uh, more than anything else, which can be helpful if you convert provinces that you've just conquered before they uh, have a chance to like rise up and have rebellion. 
um, which you can do thanks to uh, like the missionary strength. Um, this can actually really uh, help lower that unrest and possibly stop rebellions. Uh, or if you have a really high like national unrest modifier, this can help with that as well. It's not as good as what you get in Humanist, which is just national unrest minus two, because that's a flat modifier. Because this this is situational and it's only half as good, but it is still helpful. Like any any unrest reduction, in my opinion, is a is a good bonus. So let me get on to Religious Tradition, which is Yearly Prestige plus one. This is quite good uh, if you don't have other sources of prestige. Um, it actually combos quite well with the innovative idea to get uh, prestige uh, decay. So, or, or a reduction in prestige decay, I should say. <laughs> Gotta word that right. But, yeah, so prestige obviously is good because it gives all the bonuses ever under the sun, except for, you know, power projection. But... Having, having that plus one means not only are you going to have more prestige as a baseline, um, but it's it's going to help it like decay less as well, uh, which is always really nice. So we get on to Inquisition, which is Missionary Strength versus Heretics plus two. This means that if you are fighting in regions where you have uh, a lot of heretics, uh, you know, such as the Protestant Reformation, then this is going to help you convert those provinces provinces super super quickly uh, because a five percent modifier is just super super good overall but that's situational a lot of the time when you take religious ideas you'll be fighting uh heathens rather than heretics and so this bonus by itself isn't really that great but then we get on to the final bonus of religious ideas and we're gonna we're gonna talk about this one because this is kind of an interesting change that paradox made a few patches ago um Deus Volt, this final idea, gives you the Holy War Castus Belly against anyone who does not share your religion. So heathens and heretics alike, you get a permanent Castus Belly. And it's a really good Castus Belly. You get 75% aggressive expansion instead of the 100% you normally get from Conquest. You get 125% prestige as opposed to 100% from Conquest. Um, war score cost for provinces is still the same. And you... Uh, have a superiority war goal, which requires you to get 10% war score from battles to get a ticking war score. So, this is obviously just an insanely good uh, Cassus Belly to have if you neighbor nations that don't share your religion. So, it's kind of like the caveat, right? Um, but if we look at the world here, we can see that there are a lot of different religions. So, if I was a Protestant nation in northern Germany, I would just have Cassus Bellies against everyone. If I was uh, a Catholic nation in the HRE, I would have tons of Cassus Bellies uh, all over the place. So, the thing you have to ask yourself when you take religious ideas is, do I neighbor a lot of people who don't share my religion? Because it's basically going to give you one of the best Cassus Bellies in the game, uh, just after like imperialism, basically. Um, since imperialism, you can just declare war on anyone, anytime. <laughs> but, and, and some people actually argue that Holy War is better because it's a superiority. And then, anyway, the reason I'm mousing over this is, uh, Russia is usually, or any of the Russian provinces are usually a great nation to take religious ideas because, uh, they neighbor a bunch of differing religions, uh, namely a bunch of Muslims and, uh, the Catholics as well. So that's going to be that idea, but let's go ahead and go back into the tree. And then for finishing the idea group, you get culture conversion cost minus 25%. And this goes along with the theme of religious ideas of converting things rather than, you know, bumping up your tolerance, uh, which works. Um, however, due to how easy it is to accept cultures now, I don't think that that idea is as strong as it used to be. And that being said, I believe that the uh, Muscovites still get a bonus to their culture conversion. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I could be wrong on that, of course, but anyway, if you happen to have a culture conversion cost reduction, taking religious ideas is it's kind of incentivized because like 50% culture conversion cost reduction is actually pretty powerful, and it means that you can kind of spend your diplo points on something other than uh, trade or production in your provinces, and especially in big provinces, you might want to uh, convert those provinces into your culture uh, just to make sure that your you know culture is like majority and all that. But anyway, those are the ideas of religious ideas, so let's talk about the policies now. And unfortunately, religious ideas kind of has a pretty weak set of um, policies, in my opinion. Uh, there's only really four that I think are worth mentioning. The rest are just... A lot of them give missionary strength 
plus one percent but given that you have three percent to start with and if you get an inquisitor that's five percent and if it's against heretics that's five percent or seven percent if you have an inquisitor and the bonus against heretics so I don't find most of these policies to be very useful so I'm gonna talk about the ones that actually seem interesting slash maybe good ish maybe um, anyway Let's 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 talk about them. So first we have Aristocratic with the Witchcraft Act, which gives national unrest minus one and missionary strength plus one percent. Uh, mainly noting that because it is a national unrest modifier, and that's very good. And since most of the provinces in your nation are going to be of your own religion, it means that if you do have enough unrest that you would need an unrest reduction, uh, then this is a useful idea, even though it does cost admin points per month, which in my opinion, if if a policy cost admin points that makes it a little bit weaker because you just need admin points to kind of blob out now if you're not blobbing out of course this is the caveat then you don't really need admin points as much and admin policies are very very strong um, anyway so then we get on to quality and of religious ideas which gives you the military zeal act which gives you morale of armies plus five percent and siege ability plus ten percent morale of armies five percent is decent and siege ability plus ten percent is amazing uh, because this means that you basically will be sieging provinces ten percent faster and this stacks with what offensive uh with offensive ideas would give you uh which is strange that offensive ideas isn't the one giving you this bonus but i digress okay so then we go on to trade ideas, which is religiously sponsored guilds. Um, this is a pretty decent modifier. Missionary strength plus one percent and goods produced modifier plus ten percent. The goods produced modifier, part of that being the important part, because unlike production efficiency or trade efficiency, goods produced modifier increases both trade and production. When you produce ten percent more goods, that's ten percent more of your goods being added to the trade node that you're collecting from, presumably, and also a 10% bonus to the amount of goods that you can collect production income from. So any goods produced modifier is very strong, and so that's obviously a pretty good one. Um, also, another note is that a lot of these policies have religious unity bonuses, and I don't really see that being quite useful for religious ideas just because you're converting province, so many provinces so quickly that it doesn't, like, religious unity doesn't really come up that much. Like, if you really never want to go below 100% religious unity, you can take one of those policies if you happen to take one of the idea groups anyway. Like, if you just happen to be taking diplomatic ideas anyway, you can get that 20% religious unity bonus, and it's, like, it's okay, but it's not amazing, in my opinion. So anyway, then we get down to, um... The Edict of Expul... Actually, no, no, no. Sorry, I'm skipping an important one here. Field Priests and Soldiers Prayer Books, which is when you combo with Quantity Ideas, which is a pretty common group, which gives you Morale of Armies plus 10% and Recover Army Morale Speed plus 5%. The Morale of Armies is the important part here. Uh, recover Army Morale Speed is also uh, decent I could, because I believe that that is a flat modifier and not a uh, percentage modifier. So um, instead of recovering the base, you're recovering the base plus like a flat 5% bonus, um, which is pretty strong because, you know, EU format and it works. <laughs> anyway, so then we get on to the Edict of Explosion with, with defensive ideas, another pretty common and good uh, military idea group. Um, however, this one costs admin and it is a national unrest minus one and religious unity plus 20%. Again, uh, the national unrest is the important part here. The religious unity, not so much unless you you know, again, have a religiously divided nation for some reason, uh, but you probably won't because you're taking religious ideas and all your promises will likely always be converted. So, I don't know. It's okay, but it's not great. Uh, we get down to influence ideas, another common group, and it's the only reason I mention it. Uh, culture conversion costs minus 20% uh, for Diplo points. Obviously, this is going to make it so it costs minus 45% toll, which is a really, really good reduction. Um, whether or not it's worth it to pay... Uh, for a, a policy for 10 years? I don't know, because obviously you don't want this on all the time. You only want to turn this on in time to, like, convert a bunch of provinces and then turn it off immediately within 10 years, but, you know, bearing in mind that this is, like, 120 points that you're spending. So, keep that in mind. Uh, and then lastly, we have with exploration ideas, global tariffs plus 10% and religious unity plus 20%, that is colonial restrictions. And honestly, the only part of that that matters is tariffs. If you have a bunch of colonies, 10% uh, tariffs is a lot of money, usually. If not, uh, I wouldn't really worry about it. Okay, so now we're going to talk about religious events. 
Okay, so as with many idea groups, you unless otherwise stated, you only need to actually like unlock the idea group, like you know, pick it in order to get these events. So it's just something to bear in mind. Um, and all of these are on the five-year pulse, as with all other uh, events. So anyway, our first event is Heresy. A if you are a Catholic or Protestant nation, um, a your province will change to like Protestant, Reformed, or Catholic, depending on who you are. If you are not a Catholic or if you are not a Christian nation, uh, you get a pretty bad province malice instead on a random province. Uh, with a minus 40% to local manpower, plus 2 to unrest, minus 33% tax modifier, and plus 0 0.05 autonomy monthly. So, pretty nasty modifier, and that's basically what you would get anyway if your uh, province turned to the wrong religion. So, uh, pretty much the same either way, just a difference in how it's presented. Next we have Disorder, which makes you lose one stability, and there's nothing you can do about this, it's just a random event that can happen. Uh, which sucks, but thankfully there are about as many um, events to gain stability within religious ideas as there are to lose stability. So it, it really is about a 50-50 split on these events, and there's a ton of them, which I'm going to try to cover. But just, just a warning for those who have made it this far in this video. So next event we have is Holy Person Arrives. You get a Skill 2 Theologian and 5 Devotion. And that's another theme for religious ideas, is if you are a theocracy, uh, this idea group gives you tons and tons and tons of devotion. And as a side note, when I was researching for these, the humanist idea group actually lowers devotion a lot of the time. So if you're playing a theocracy, uh, I can recommend this group to, if you want to get more devotion. However, if you take humanist, you will be losing a lot of devotion. So, you know, do what you will with that information. The next I, uh, event that we have is support for the war and this is when you are in a war with a religious enemy so you're basically fighting you know your holy war uh, you lose two war exhaustion if you have at least five war exhaustion um, and there's and there's another event that's basically identical called holy war which does more or less the same thing um, another key aspect of these events is a lot of them give you plus 10 loyalty with the clergy. So those of you playing with the Cossacks um, and you like your clergy, you're going to get a lot of bonuses from here as well. So next we have the Failed Promises uh, event, which is when you border a heretic or heathen nation and haven't fought a war in the last five years. You get to choose between losing 15 uh, devotion and 1 stability, or losing 15 devotion and getting a size 1 religious rebel stack. So, um, yeah, what a great event, right? Um, next we have the clergy mobilizes the population. You gain 1 stability and 50 admin power if your country has less than 3 stability. And the clergy gain 10 loyalty just for good measure. Uh, next we have conservative backlash, which is uh, after you unlock the uh, divine supremacy, uh, which is the third idea, the missionary strength bonus, um, you can get this event, which uh, you get to choose between having... Minus one stability or a size one religious uh, rebels and plus 22 devotion. So, again, a lot of these events make you choose between stability or rebels, which is not great in my opinion. Uh, next, we get the unity of faith event. Uh, if your stability is less than one, you have a chance to get this, and it's plus one stability and 50 admin points. So, that's pretty good. Uh, next, we have the Liberals Angry event, which is uh, once the Age of Revolution start, choose between size 1 revolutionaries, uh, and these revolutionaries will not turn your country into a revolutionary republic. The only way you can get those, in my, at least is like the last time I checked, is to actually have the revolution disaster happen and let those rebels take over your capital. Um, however, these revolutionaries will likely, if they succeed, turn your country into a constitutional republic. So, it can still be a way to turn into a republic pretty easily if you want to. However, um, apart from that, like, like, I, let, let me, let me say though, because this is the age of revolutions, so, this is, this is pretty far into the game. Um, and your country is likely going to be pretty big at this point, so, you're going to be sitting on those rebels for a long time. Um... <laughs> But again, it is an option, but if you don't take the Rebels, uh, which honestly are probably easier at that point, uh, you instead lose 20 Devotion and a Stability Point. So again, more Stability Losses. Yay! 
Next we have the Religious Devotion event. Uh, if your unity is less than 100%, you gain 15 devotion, 1 stability, 50 admin power, and 10 clergy loyalty. So, very powerful event. And since you're going to be taking a lot of uh, heathen heretic provinces, if you're smart when you take this uh, idea group, then that's going to be a pretty big bonus for you. Next we have the They See the Light event, which is, uh, it converts a heathen province to the state religion unless it is a center of reformation. Um, and there's a similar event where uh, it turns a heretic province to you. Next we have the Divine Guidance event, which gives you 5 devotion, 1 stability, 50 admin power, and 10 clergy loyalty. So again, a lot of these events give you stability and admin power, which is quite nice, uh, especially because they kind of make up for the events that make you lose stability. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm going to give my closing thoughts now. So the best way that I can really describe religious ideas is that they're very powerful, but they're situational. So the thing is with religious ideas is you really, really need to have that border with an, with a lot of nations, uh, like I mean a lot of nations, that have a differing religion than you. If you only neighbor one person that has a different religion than you, you're not really going to get a lot of use out of this idea group. I don't, I don't really find this idea to be that useful unless you're actually making use of those bonuses but um, interestingly enough in Asia there's a lot of places where like there are a lot of unique religions and things of that nature that um, it can be really easy to make use of these ideas more so than uh, Europe which is typically um, I say pretty homogenous uh, but especially at the start of the game like everyone's Catholic so <laughs> That's going to make things uh, pretty difficult to actually make use of these ideas. Whereas if you're playing as uh, Muscovy, Russia, or any of the uh, Asian uh, religions, I mean, I mean, look at this. We've got Shinto, uh, Vajrayana, Hindu, Sikh, Shia, Sunni, like Theravada, like just all these crazy, like all these different religions out here. Um, there's even an animist country at the start of the game. Uh, Whose, whose name I forget. I think, can I find them real quick? Uh, yeah, Manipur. It's uh, in this province, actually. Um, it's a one province minor that's animus at the start of the game. And so you can actually take religious ideas as them as well, which is pretty hilarious. But that's kind of how I feel about religious ideas is if you are able to make use of the bonuses, it's extremely powerful. But if you're in a fairly religiously homogenous area, like as you can see down here, uh, where I'm playing as Kilwa, pretty much everything is Sunni for the most part. So um, there's there's some fetishist provinces, but fetishist provinces are pretty easy to convert. And another another note is if you're playing as a Muslim country, and th and this may change in a in a patch. I actually read recently that Paradox is planning on changing how piety works uh, for Muslims. So right now though, uh, if you get a if you get your piety up to 100%, you have 3% missionary strength anyway. And so I don't really see much use for religious ideas for Muslim countries apart from getting Deus Volt um, just to get that sweet, sweet Cassus Belly. And it really is an amazing Cassus Belly because the 75% uh, aggressive expansion modifier stacks well with other uh, modifiers like uh, from, from influence ideas, for example, um, to really just make this a very, very strong group at what it does. Um, so again, you know, if you if you don't have any neighbors and you can't make use of Deus Volt, there's not really much point of taking religious ideas. However, if you can, I do recommend it because it is a very strong group for that reason. Um, and again, unfortunately, the policies for this group are kind of crap, but that's what you that's the price you pay for one of the best Cassus Bellies in the game. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informational and entertaining. And uh, please give a like and comment if you would like to see the series prosper. And of course, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can move closer to doing this full-time. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.